This is our news, the weekend edition, and on the broadcast tonight, the finance minister expects government to meet its deficit target. Plus, what's the latest on the marital rape issue? The social services minister calls for a wider public discussion on the matter. And the Angliston MP confirms she will not run for a party position in the PLP's upcoming convention. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles and thanks so much for joining us. Topping news, persistent power outages here in the capital over the last week continue to plague many areas and leave thousands of BPL customers hot and disgruntled. The company has been load shedding since Wednesday. According to BPL, the load shedding exercise is as a result of problems experienced with its generating assets at the Blue Hills power station. There has also been a spike in customer demand on the network as a result of increasing temperatures. BPL says the loss in generation coupled with the increase in demand has resulted in the shortfall of generation and the need for load shedding, which the company said is being executed in an hour and a half and two hour intervals. Meantime, BPL advises that the installation of additional rental generation at the Blue Hills station is nearing completion and expects that additional power will be available by next week Sunday. This will help to bolster BPL's available generation, putting the company in a better position to meet the increasing customer demand during the summer period. In other news, Finance Minister Peter Turnquist says while government expects to fall short on its revenue target of $2.6 billion by the end of the fiscal year in a few weeks, he expects for the Minnesota administration to hit its deficit target of $270 million. This is a big government and things happen that, you know, it takes a while to trickle down to, to us at the Ministry of Finance. Um, we believe that we will meet our uh, deficit target uh, that, that was set uh, in the, at the beginning of the year. Uh, we've been very careful <clears throat> to try and manage uh, expectations, manage our expenditure, uh, given uh, uh, effect uh, to the fact that we know that we were going to lose some revenue as a result of the concessions and the other challenges that we've had in, in the revenue side. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, hats off to the ministry, hats off to uh, the government as a whole who've uh, uh, been cooperative in playing their part. Uh, we've been able to meet that uh, without sacrificing any quality or, or uh, um, um, the efficiency of service. The government caught some flack from the opposition after the finance minister revealed government would fall short of its revenue target. Turnquest said it was the result of unforeseen issues like the court battle with web shops over increased taxes. We anticipate that for the last uh, three months of the year, um, uh, moving from the last uh, um, hard numbers that we have, that we will sustain or, 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 or yield the same level of uh, revenue that we have in the previous year. So uh, we expect the, the, to, the uh, returns to be predictable and sustain, uh, sustainable year on year. That gives us a pretty good uh, idea of where our revenue number will end up. And as we've said, we anticipate that we're going to be somewhere around uh, 400 million or so down from where we had projected. The Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana will be doing a lot of traveling over the next few months, including trips to countries where the drug has been legalized and decriminalized. Co-chair of the Marijuana Commission, Quinn McCartney, recently revealed trips are planned for Canada and Jamaica. Efforts are being made for members of the Commission to conduct a fact-finding mission in Jamaica. While in Jamaica, members of the Commission hope to meet with key officials from both the Jamaican government and officials from the Cannabis Leg Licensing Authority to investigate the regulatory issues and realities facing our sister CARICOM member state. In addition, Members of the Commission plan to travel to Canada to meet with government officials and also the Cannabis Licensing Authority there in an effort to obtain a broader perspective relative to, relative to concerns surrounding cannabis reform around the world. In 2018, Canada legalized the drug nationwide and Jamaica decriminalized small amounts of marijuana in 2015. McCartney says in addition to those international trips, there are also town meetings planned for the Family Islands and New Providence as they seek to get a nationwide assessment on marijuana. Commissioners have already traveled to Abaco, Eleuthera 
and Exuma to conduct town hall meetings with local residents. Going forward, town hall meetings are scheduled for New Providence next week Wednesday on the 26th of June at 6.30 p.m. at the St. John's College Auditorium in Stapleton Gardens. And then on the 27th, next week Thursday, we will have a town hall meeting in Grand Bahama at the Foster B. Pestana Center, Christ the King Anglican Church, and that meeting will also be at 6.30 p.m. The CARICOM Regional Commission on Marijuana has recommended the declassification of marijuana as a dangerous drug in all legalization and reclassification of the drug as a controlled substance, similarly to tobacco and alcohol. According to the Regional Commission report, the Bahamas could see a financial benefit of around $5 million from the legalization of the substance and regulation of its sale, but advocacy groups suggest that figure is far too conservative, and if considered beyond domestic use, it is over $1 billion. Well, as the debate continues on the legalization of marijuana here in the country, Chief Financial Officer at Fidelity Bank, Gowan Bo, says the issue goes far deeper than we think, as many of the financial corporations may not accept the procedures from marijuana business. Just recently, there was a meeting amongst the Caribbean banks and um, different players in North America in terms of correspondence. And it is legal in, I think, near 39 states in the U.S., but still a federal crime. So banks in the U.S. are still not permitted to accept funds because it is, if you will, the banking of proceeds from a criminal activity. Um, Canada, which has legalized it on a, um, on, a, on a federal or national level, is still very mindful that it cannot do business with the U.S. with these same clients. Bo believes that there could be similar issues here in the Bahamas given the current banking system. Domestically, you know, having it legalized and saying we could potentially cultivate it, grow and create new industries, well, that's a, a fantastic possibility. But we also have to think about will it be able to be banked? Will it be able to actually be used in its day-to-day -day activities in the sense that is this going to be another cash industry that's going to create concerns and that's not to dampen that is to say that the debate is not solely on what i'm going to call the product according to Bo, he is hoping that the these issues will be addressed by the marijuana commission as they gather their findings though we did not give a timeline as to when it will happen social services minister frankie campbell said a conversation about marital rape is needed before any legislation on the issue is taken to the House of Assembly. Marital rape, as I would have said before, is an ongoing discussion. I would have indicated that there are several schools of thought. Um, there is the religious community. And so there's much discussion still needed to harmonize a conclusion. It makes no sense to come to a conclusion that will result in dividing other people. So we want to talk some more to see how we can harmonize a conclusion that would work for everybody. Last year, when the Attorney General appeared before the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, Switzerland, he said the Bahamian government intends to criminalize marital rape. A draft bill was then drawn up. However, nothing further has come of the matter since. In other news, with the upcoming Progressive Liberal Party convention just a month away, Former deputy leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, Glennis Hannah Martin, is confirming she has no plans to run for any post in the party. Our Jasmine Brown reports. The Anglerston MP says not only will she not challenge Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Brave Davis for a second time at the BLP's convention next month, she is not considering running for any position in the party. No, I have no intention of offering for any position this time around. Anna Martin was defeated when she challenged Davis for the leadership post at the last convention in October 2017. Davis received 1,004 votes to Hannah Martin's 300. It was the first time in 20 years PLPs voted for a new leader. Following the defeat, Hannah Martin said the leadership race did not leave her disappointed, but inspired. The PLP is expected to hold a convention on July 25th and 26th after several postponements. Hannah Martin says she believes the party's focus should be on regrouping and finding solutions to the many critical issues facing the country. The party continues to rebuild and um, reposition itself. Uh, and to redefine itself. The Anglerton MP suggested a part of that regrouping should be getting back to their roots. Back in touch with its roots so it can become the strong 
rooted political force that it was intended to be and has been over the, the generations. In the meantime, it is yet to be seen if anyone will challenge Davis for the leadership of the party. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. All right, thanks a lot, Jasmine. In news from the crime beat, a 19-year-old male is nursing injuries in hospital following a shooting on Windsor Lane last night. Police say the teen was standing in the area of an apartment complex around 10 last night when he was approached by a gunman who shot him and then ran away. The shooting victim was taken to hospital where he was, at last report, listed in stable condition. Meantime, police are seeking the public's assistance in locating the person responsible for this shooting. Well, an American visitor spent the night behind bars after he was found in possession of an illegal firearm and ammunition yesterday. Officers of the Bahamas Customs conducted a search of the visitor's luggage at Jet Aviation last night and discovered a .45mm pistol with 10 rounds of ammunition. The American was taken into custody as police continue their investigation. Still ahead tonight, police cracking down on cyberbullying. And later, the PLP chairman weighs in on the minimum GPA requirement for a government tertiary grant. Those stories and more when our news, The Weekend Edition, returns.